Good morning and uh, hello and uh, my name is Rick and I model old gauge in my garden. Uh, the purpose of this video that I'm going to make is to see if I can help you make one of these which is a turnout for your model railway. This one's in old gauge but the uh, the video and the way the methods we use apply to any gauge. You can uh, uh, they'll convert to any gauge you like, whether it be EM, 4mm, uh, gauge or fine scale which I'm modelling. And uh, that's the purpose of the video. Uh, be a bit of gluing, a uh, bit of soldering, don't worry about the soldering. Uh, making tracks a good place to start if you've never soldered before. It's very easy. Uh, if your tool, tool skills are a bit weak, well, join the club, so are mine. Uh, you don't have to be devastatingly accurate to make a turnout. You know, if you're near enough, is good enough. And we're finding a lot of uh, uh, trap making, near enough is good enough. You don't have to be absolutely spot on. You don't have to be a master craftsman. And uh, hopefully uh, we can build your skills uh, while we're making this turnout. Uh, I'll do it in an easy step-by-step -step process uh, that should be easy for you to follow. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, move on to our first step. Where do we start then in our build? The first thing we need to build off is a template of the track piece that we want to build, a pattern if you like. Uh, there's various ways you can source these, you can go on the internet and uh, people have downloaded them in various gauges and you'll maybe pick up what you want there. You can get them off uh, track component suppliers, I know C&L, the track components that I use. Uh, they will uh, uh, sell you a set of templates uh, for various pieces of track. Uh, but the one thing I would say quite strongly at this point is there is a piece of software on the, a piece of software out there on the internet. It's free. It costs you nothing. And indeed, I think it's the only thing that you're going to source on this video is free, and it's called Template. Uh, and it will make any piece of track you want in any gauge that you like. Uh, got various gauges from gauge one all the way down to N gauge and you know EM gauge, 4mm, O gauge fine, O gauge coarse, all this sort of thing. It's got loads of gauges in it that you can build uh, most anything you want off and it's free. However the one thing that puts a lot of people off Templot is it's very complicated and it is a bit complicated it's a bit daunting at first and it needs to be a little bit complicated because it's very capable now you can use Templot in one or two ways you can either use it just to knock out a specific template of what you want or you can use it to plan your whole layout. Certainly in your gauge where you're using a lot of space and space at a premium, I prefer to plan my whole layout on it because I can mess about on the computer before I actually put anything down in hard track or curves or this sort of thing. It saves a lot of work and it saves a lot of failures because you'll know what exactly will what fit will fit where. So I would certainly recommend, advocate very strongly the use of template. Like I say, you'll find templates, uh, templates around the place, but template uh, I would recommend strongly. Now, just getting around that complicated first thing of template, what I'm going to do here, because I don't have the ability to uh, put computer screens up uh, on, on this video, I'm not that technically uh, competent, so I just want to talk you through how you get your first template out of Templot. Very simple, go on Google and Google in Templot, T-E-M-P-L-O-T. Okay, this comes straight up as a, as a number one thing on Google and the number one item on the Templot menu is download and install. So go and do that and you'll end up with, uh, after you've done that, a little Templot icon on your desktop and it's a picture of a little yellow safety helmet and that's your Templot icon. So when you're all loaded up and ready to go, uh, click on the template item and there'll be a little uh, welcome to template uh, menu bar, come on it'll say templates are going to start in any minute and just press the go one and then I think you might get a default track panel that comes up that says save your previous track work or something like that. You might not get that if you're opening it for the first time but just put cancel, discard that. There's a little piece of... Uh, uh, default track formation in there. Anyway, when you get to the 
the next program panel it will say on the right it's got a few menus but on the far right of this menu panel appearing in the center of the screen is the word trackpad on a button press the trackpad button and that will take you to the actual trackpad where you do your track building no hold it right there don't go any farther in sort of messing about with turnouts and the commands there's loads of them and i think that's what puts people off what i'd like you to do is go to the top right of the menu bar and you'll see the help button click on the help and a drop down menu comes on there and about third item down is something called the template companion user guide click on that and then up comes three menu pages on one screen one on the left one in the middle one on the right we want the one on the left it's blue writing on a black background and i want you to click on the one that says for beginners and this will take you to another page and at the beginning of that page i want you to click on the menu item zero for beginners and th th that will take you to a page that is high and in that page highlighted in blue writing is written your first printed template if you click on that it will take you to a little video that martin wins constructed better than i could ever do about how you create in the software and print out your first template and that's what i recommend you do now what I would say in that for beginners menu, have a look at all the items in there because it will explain to you a bit more about the program of Templot and a bit more how we name things when we're constructing track and uh, to keep this, this video very simple for you. So, off you go, go and download Templot and go and print out your first template. So, Having printed out our first template, I did the very thing that I was just talking about to print the template and out came this template on two A4 pieces of paper. Now this one I think is just using the default colours of yellow and orange which might be a bit difficult to build your track off. And what I would suggest you do is you go back into template and look at the menu bar, it's over on the right side of the top menu bar called output options and in there you can click down and it says printing color or printing grayscales and i clicked on printing in grayscales and i came out with this one which is black and white or black and gray or gray and white call it what you will and that will print that will be a lot better to build off and shows up i hope a bit better on the video camera and indeed if we're going to use this one, the grey and black one to build off, okay, we can put this one, this orange and yellow one, put this to one side and if we cover up any detail on the black and white one, we can just refer to it on this one if we obscure any detail on the build. So having two templates, one to build off and one to refer to is a good idea. Okay. We've got our template, step one, done. So here we are with our templates and uh, we've, got, we've got to stick it together. We've got a ruler, sharp knife and a bit of uh, paper glue. Pritt stick, this is Yoohoo stick. Okay, so all I'm going to do, the template's got margins all around it so you can just put your ruler on the line of the margin, nicely marked and just make sure that we're there on there and draw your knife across it Zoop, up comes the margin put that in the bin and then we'll take our glue a bit like a lipstick this stuff in it just one second get the right end of it yeah that's it okay and we're just across the bit to stick it on okay with it being a sort of water based base glue the the paper will get a bit flexible but don't worry what you need to do is just line up the rails okay as accurately as you can so we'll just do that now yeah I'm pretty happy with that and zoom that's our first job done okay template glue together all in one piece
Moving on to what materials we'll need to build this uh, turnout, uh, let's have a look at what we need. Uh, we'll need a pack of turnout timbers, looking from the bottom up. We will need uh, some plastic chairs, these are three bolt uh, plastic chairs that I use, sort of synonymous with British Rail, which is the era I model. We'll need some four bolt plastic chairs, again this pattern is very much British Rail. Uh, so that's the chairs and we'll need some rail okay this is nickel silver rail I bought it in half meter lengths uh, again from CNL I'm not advertising CNL it's just what I use okay we'll need some plastic fish plates uh, to make joints that are electrically insulated because the build we're going to do is going to be uh, wired for uh, electrical operation of your your locomotives etc whether that be DC or DCC we also need some brass fish plates okay where we want to conduct electricity okay and uh, that's what we need there'll be some other supplementary things like materials like this sort of stuff which is uh, uh, double uh, sided sticky tape okay uh, we'll need that in our next operation straight away uh, so uh, let's move on to our next operation okay just before we start timbering up uh, doing that job I just want to draw your attention to this little bit of writing on the template you'll see it if you've printed out a tempot template and it says warning uh, name of the printer uh, printer has not been calibrated this template may not be dimensionally accurate uh, which is a true statement uh, because uh, what you should do if you're doing a large formation is calibrate your printer so that the software prints out the actual size I know for a fact that on my printer uh, across ways it's dead on no problem but it loses a millimeter for every page now if I'm just making one turn out uh, like you probably are uh, in this video then you know if you're losing a millimeter a page it's nothing to get worried about nothing to concern yourself about but just to uh, uh, square off that warning there uh, right then so let's get on and start with timbering up okay so we need some double sided sticky tape and what I'm going to do is this rail first which is the stock rail and I'm going to run out a nice big length of this tape and stick it on. So I'll go right to the end there, a little bit farther than the rail, keep in line with the rail, stick it on. Zoom, first bit done. Okay, and then I'm going to do the next, I'm going to do the self same thing. Okay, get the right length, make sure you've got more than enough. Okay, and I'm whoa, 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 whoa. accidents will happen. Just lift that gently off. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, down along here. You can't bend this stuff, it's not like masking tape. Just trim that off a bit there. Where's my scissors? There we are. Come here. Just trim that off a bit there. Okay. And I'll just discard that piece for now. Okay, so we've got our turnout rail there and our stop rail there. And we'll just pack off another piece. Put that in there to straighten up make sure you go right to the end no problem just trim that little piece off there okay so that's the two the stop rail and the turnout rail done there and we're going to run some down the middle and what I would say if you're doing the smaller gauges um, H O double O uh, because of the narrowness you only need to sort of put the sticky tape down the middle on the larger gauges you need to be a bit more stronger with it and put it down uh, the rails underneath the rails so you get a better better sticky put that along there there we go right across there 
Ok, let's start. And then another little bit, just to make sure we're along there. Just in there, please. Thank you very much. Ok, that's the sticky tape on. So as you can see, I've cut all my sleepers that I need off the sprue in the pack. Uh, don't want to waste time just going through that laborious exercise, but it's easy. You can break them off, cut them off. Uh, you end up with a little bit of a edge, a rough edge. You can just whip that off with a Stanley knife to give you a nice clean edge on the end now. Okay. So you've got a nice cleaner edge, it looks a little bit better. If you need to trim one to size, uh, then I use these, uh, these are rail cutter pliers, uh, Zuron. Yeah, okay, and you can just nip a bit off to cut them to size. Hold your cutters square, make, well, make sure the blade's square, and just nip it off. Easily done, no problem. Okay, other thing being, yes, two sides for sleeper. This bit, the bottom bit's got sort of holes drilled in it. Yeah, okay, and it's quite smooth. And the top bit, don't know if you can see that, has got a sort of a, a wood grain effect to uh, uh, be like a sleeper, if you like. Okay, so that's uh, the sleep print. I'm going to start timbering up now. And I'm just going to ease the top layer of my double-sided sticky tape off. Okay, a little bit, leave a little margin for you to do that. Okay, and that's that piece off and come up that piece off junk right the way along there okay and I'll lift a bit more off here okay and as you can see now the double sided tape is transparent and we can see our template again while I'm doing this, I just wanted to have a little talk about where you get your stuff from, your materials from. As I said, I use c &L. I'm not promoting them or advertising them. But there's other uh, people who do track work. Uh, I think the big names, you know, I say big names, they're only small companies and I wouldn't want to do anybody down uh, in making this video. The big names are, uh, well c &L for one, and you get Borg Rail, and mark where they make track but I think they also sell track components uh, and then there's uh, Greenwood model supplies they they do stuff and these suppliers also do I use plastic timbers because I'm out in the garden uh, but uh, they also do uh, Greenwood also do and other companies do uh, I've got them too far in it's easy just flick them off Got them wrong. So Greenwood also do wooden sleepers and other suppliers do wooden sleepers. Also the gauge societies do track components. EM, I think the 4 mil, certainly scale 7 do, uh, but you've got to be uh, a member of the society to buy. It's a member only purchase, but it doesn't cost much. But like I say, if you get on the internet for your track components, have a good look around, shop around. I'm not sort of uh, promoting anybody, but uh, uh, like I say, shop around and get what suits you, what you need. You might want to use wood sleepers, you might want to use plastic sleepers. It's all the same for me. Okay, and one of the things you can do if you want to be really accurate is just put yourself a straight edge here. Okay, so that you can register your timber against it and you can end up with a nice straight line. Okay, not something they always do, but uh, you can do it like that if you wish. So that's suppliers. Oh, one supplier I missed out. Uh, Pico, the sells the people who make the most of the proprietary track. They also sell track components. So have a look at what they supply. Like I say, do your research on, on the uh, internet. And they all have website, it's the modern way to do things. And they'll tell you what they have and what they don't have. Okay, so I'll crack on with timbering up. And uh, we'll see you in a few minutes when I come back. Oh, didn't mention this. I've left this sleeper out here. 
okay the one next to the tie bar that moves the switch blades okay because we're going to use a false sleeper to connect our switch blades together and use it to operate them so I've left the one the sleeper out which is next to I'll just move it down and get a better view I'll okay, cut this one here which is by the tie bar by the switch blades I leave that sleeper out different methods to do that but I'm showing you an easy one okay you might want to improve on that as you go on that's up to you okay see you in a minute So that's all our timbering done, okay, all our timbers are in place as you can see, uh, most I've got to the right size, some are a little bit long, and if you look some are a little bit short, I'm only talking about 2 mil at most, but uh, it doesn't matter, as long as we, they're well within the, uh, the rail, okay, so we get the chairs on, it doesn't matter. Okay, so that's that one. Uh, one thing I thought I would do is just talk about why I left this timber out here. And here's one I made earlier, this curve turnout, okay, is using a false sleeper there just to show you that to operate the switch blades. Okay, that's where we are there. Alright. That's why we do that. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to mention was uh, the turnout I just showed you is a curve turnout and it's one of the real things why we want to make our own track that we can make curve turnouts and get exactly what we want. This one the beginners one, the one we're beginning with, I've made this a straight one, okay, to keep it as simple as possible. Now, if you were feeling quite brave and you want to start with a curved turnout, okay, as your first build, please go ahead, because what I'll do in the course of this build, the slight differences, and they are only slight differences, between building a curved turnout and a straight one, I will uh, allude to them as we go on using the, that curved turnout. Okay, so uh, like I said, this is a straight one. It's, uh, uh, I think I've already said this, it's an A6, it's got an A switch, and the V crossing has a ratio of one in six. That is to say, six inches it goes that way, it turns out one inch that way. So this is an A6. Okay, All right then, uh, next thing we've got to do is start trying to get some rail on it. So the next job is to prepare our piece of rail for fitting to our turnout. Okay, so one important thing about the rail we're using, it's bullhead rail. Okay, there's another type of rail called flat bottom rail. Flat bottom rail is an entirely different animal to this. And this video will not help you if you want to build in flat bottom rail. This video is about building with bullhead rail. Important thing to note about bullhead rail is that the running surface on the top of the rail is thicker than the uh, bedding surface on the bottom of the rail. I'm going to hold it up to the camera and see if you can just get a view of the thin bit and the thick bit okay, of the rail. You'll see what I mean. Okay, the top is thick and the bottom is thin. Like so. If you can just get all of that. Okay. That might have worked, that might not. But if you've got a piece of bullhead rail in your hand and you're pursuing this project, then you'll sort of see that with your own eyes. It's very easy to get this rail upside down. Yeah. You always make sure that you've got it right way up and that you want to use. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is mark it to length and cut it to length. At the bottom end here, I'm going to overhang it by about 10 mil. Okay, so I'm going to cut it about 10 mil on from the sleeper. Okay, that's a little bit long, but if you're going to do this for the first time, I would say to you that it's better to have your rails longer than shorter because it makes it easier to fit to your connecting track. Okay, as you go on and you get a bit better, okay, you might want to shorten it down a bit. Okay, so it looks a bit better. But I would say at this stage, I would go for longer rather than shorter. So what I'm going to do is just check I've got 10 mil there, which I indeed I have. And then I'm going to clip it. Where are they? 
these bulldog clips that you get in the office and round about okay these are always handy for making track so stand at my track piece of rail the right way up 10 mil thank you very much clip it in position there so I can't pull it forward and then just bring me the wheel forward there again okay let's get it on the millimetric side and using a, one of these a fine point a permanent marker pen this one's made by somebody called Sharpie well done Sharpie okay I'm going again just keep me real straight and mark 10 mil thank you very much just a little black line there okay I don't even think you'll see it I'll just try and hold it up to the camera to see if you can see the mark I've made I don't know if you can okay but that's where I'm going to cut on that little black mark you can file and, and, and mess about and, and, and saw but making bright marks for scribes is difficult and they're hard to see sometimes so always I always uh, use, a, use a permanent marker something like that okay Here we are, I'm going to cut the rail, I'm going to use a junior hacksaw, you can't cut uh, O gauge rail with uh, rail cutter pliers, it's just too thick and too strong. So I'm going to use uh, a junior hacksaw, okay, from your local hardware store. What I would say is, uh, if you're going to get a junior hacksaw, buy some spur blades with it. I see a lot of people struggling with a little junior hacksaw, good little tool, and because the blades are no good, it's ripped all the teeth off it. So make sure you've got a good blade in it, okay, and then... What I'll do is I'm just going to put my thumb right up against the mark so that I can rest my saw blade up against my thumb and I'm going to draw back twice or three or four times until I create a groove in the piece that I'm sawing. Okay, and then gently, I'm not exerting too much down with pressure at all, let the saw do the work. Take your time, hardly exerting any pressure at all, just nicely go through, I don't know if the camera's shaking as I'm sorry, I'll just tighten my little bite up, through we go, nice and easy, and we're done. So that's my stock rail sawn to length, I'm just making sure I've got 10 mil there at either end, yeah okay, don't forget it's always better to saw longer than shorter, because you can take a bit off but you can't add it on. Now then, the next job I want to do in preparing our rail is to put a cosmetic rail joint in, so it looks like we've got a joint on the actual rail using flish plates. Again, I'm going to get my pen, if you look at our template, You'll always see a rail joint because it's marked with a line across the rail. Just a straight line, uh, about 5mm long, showing a rail break. And when we have a rail break, we should put in a fish plated joint. So I know that me, I've got the rail central there. Okay, about 10mm either side. And I'm just going to get in my permanent marker and put a mark right between the two sleepers. Okay, that... Uh, adjacent to the rail brake okay so I've marked it again and then I'm going to put my piece back in the vise and I'll show you what I'm going to do so looking very carefully at our rail making sure we've got the bull head the thick bit at the top and that's the bit we've marked what I'm going to do is just saw through the top edge of the rail the bull head of the rail itself Again, I'm going to use my thumb as a little fence to lean my saw against and just draw back once, twice, three times and just cut through the bullhead, the top of the rail. Yeah, I think we're almost there, just another stroke. should do us okay so so 
so I just hold it up to the camera all I want to show you is I've just sawn through the top edge of the rail and the top edge of the rail only okay the thick bit of the bull head right then because what we're going to do is we're going to put and solder on fish plates there and at either side so it looks like a rail joint so we're going to be doing our first soldering next okay and it's simple don't run away it doesn't hurt it's dead easy but i am going to talk about soldering irons first Right then, a word about soldering irons before we move on to doing this little bit of soldering. Uh, this is the iron I would normally use uh, if I was soldering up here. It's a Weller 40 watt. General purpose iron for, for modellers, for knocking kits together, all this sort of thing and soldering up points. You know, very good general purpose tool. That's what I'd normally use. Uh, I've just treated myself to a new one because I burnt through the flex of the old one. Uh, but uh, that's what I'd normally use. But you've got to lash out a bit of money for one of these. And uh, that's what you don't want to do. Okay, next one. You might find one of these hanging around somebody's garage. And you might think, oh, that's a good solder iron. That'll do me. Again, it's a Weller. Uh, but it's only 15 watts. This is not powerful enough for what we want. All this will do is, is melt uh, you work slowly it will not solder uh, stuff like rail because for you know light electrical work fine but for a heavy piece of rail like we're going to use it on just not strong enough okay the one i am going to use on this job is one that was given to me uh, by my next door neighbor he got it free with uh, his electrician i think he got it free with a couple of coils of wire he bought and uh, it's the sort of thing you pick up uh, you know at your local hardware shop maybe in the uh, super discounters supermarkets they do tools and soldering irons and this one believe it or not is 60 watts it's more powerful than my uh, medium sized weller and it is temperature controlled by this little dial here I think controlled is the wrong word okay it tries to control the temperature but this uh, iron does have a, a tendency to get quite hot but this is the type of thing that you might come across when you first start soldering okay and uh, this is what I'm going to use okay so that uh, you can see it can be done with uh, this standard of tools as well okay so like I say this is a 60 watt if you've got a soldering iron that's in the 40 to 60 watt range okay that should do you only quite a small tip on this but we'll work with that that'll work for us not a problem okay so that's our soldering irons along with the soldering iron keep safe be safe try and get a soldering iron stand of some sort okay because you don't want to be burning everything that's around you so soldering iron and a soldering iron stand next thing okay to solder we come on to the solder itself okay and this is a 60 40 solder it's electrical solder it's what you'll see you might buy it down your hardware shop uh, that sort of thing easily got hold of uh, a lot of people use this it's a uh, cord 2% flux cord okay but uh, you'll pick this up easy enough uh, it's not specialized so that should be ready available down your hardware shop or something bit of solder right the next thing and this is a little bit specialized uh, and that's flux uh, you can't do decent soldering without a decent flux and uh, the stuff you get down the hardware shop is perhaps traditionally for plumbing uh, soldering okay which is not what we want we do mechanical soldering joining things together mechanically and this is uh, by produced by building all gauge online okay uh, not sure how much it is it wasn't that much as i recall but a good flux is essential to a good joint and this is where i'm going to say send off for some of this yeah okay and because uh, it will make a good joint you need a good flux to make a good joint there it is i'll show you the bottle okay if i can centralize that up on the camera there we go okay and this is from building all gauge you find them online and you can order it online but i do think good flux essential okay what else do we need for soldering okay we need always to clean what uh we're going to solder 
and for this you can get a little scratch pen with a little fiberglass core in it and they are really good at cleaning up your metal before you solder because if it's not clean it ain't going to solder but they are a little bit vicious in the fact that these little fiberglass strands as you rub at your piece come off in little flakes and they do have a tendency to get in your fingers and can be quite uncomfortable what I would say is if you're quite soft skinned you might want to put on some latex gloves before you start using one of these and again like the, the jolly old junior axel okay if you're going to get one of these uh, I think I, I think you pick these up on Amazon for pence almost okay get some replacements because you'll soon get through these okay you'll soon get through the, the uh, fiberglass brushes so don't just get a pen get a pack of 10 replacements at least because you soon get through it okay so like I say good tool but a uh, little bit of a safety warning here okay I mean I'll be sat watching the telly at night and I'll go ooch and I've got a little bit of fiberglass stuck in that I'll, I'll pick out so uh, these come with a cautionary warning they are good and you know I'll put up with the downside because they are so good the other thing we need okay a little bit of a wire brush or a steel brush whatever you want to use just for cleaning up I've used this one so much I broke the handle okay right so that's the stuff we start before we the stuff we need before we solder okay so let's think about now getting on to solder now just to adjust the camera so you can see what's going to happen Okay, moving on to do our, best, our first bit of soldering. There's the fish plates that we're going to solder on. You can see they've got bolt heads on one side, which are sort of embossed onto them. We want a tin, okay, that is put a bit of solder on the other side of them, the flat side of them, that's going to go against the rail. So what I'm going to do is going to get our scratch brush, okay, and I'm going to rub them up so that they really shine. I'm not going to do one, I'm going to do about a dozen, okay, I'm going to do about a dozen, no point messing about with little things when you can do big things all at once, okay, now I've let the soldering iron warm up and just unplugged it, you can see now, whoops, got off the picture there, okay, they're nice and shiny, compared to the others which is the effect I want to. Now I'm going to get my soldering flux which is a liquid flux and I'm going to put it on with this old paintbrush that I have. Yeah okay this old paintbrush dip it in okay paint on the flux yeah okay and then while I, I warm my soldering iron up but I've just unplugged it while I did this okay just paint the flux on I'm going to plug my soldering iron in now okay some people put those uh, delay timer buttons on the soldering irons and just press the button and on it comes for so many minutes okay and what I do want to do now is just show you the soldering iron is just warming up I'll just give it a wipe on the wet sponge I'm sorry you can't see that I'm just going to touch my solder see what happens the iron's not warm enough yet the shoulder needs to melt instantaneously okay that's not happening because okay my uh, iron's not quite hot enough Temperature setting, yeah, we're okay there. Just turn up a bit more. Okay, let's have a see. See if we can get a touch on there. Yeah, it's just melting now. Can you see it? Okay, so I'm going to build up a blob of solder on the end of the iron. That's a big blob, but don't worry, no problem. And then I'm just going to paint it onto the back of these fish plates. Just keep going with your iron, paint it on all the time, just keep painting it on. 
where the flux is and where the heat is that's where the solder goes just keep painting it on okay just keep painting on I'll put plenty of solder on, on the iron so there's plenty to spread around okay and keep going oops they might join together they might okay and that's called tinning okay I think it's something to do that the original solders were made out of tin so just spread that all over okay like I say them just join together a bit there I don't want that I don't want you to do it either okay make sure it's all over the up covered all over nice silvery shiny solder okay I am back in our rest unplug our solder iron that's tinning done okay that's the tinning done left a few burn marks on our wood but hey who cares right okay on to the next bit now okay and we're going to apply our tinned uh, fish plates one either side we're going to apply our tinned fish plates one either side okay to our rail which we've got the uh, saw mark in the top of okay so what we need to do there is clean the rail get our scratch brush in there again give it a good clean both sides give it a good clean you get a little bit of residue from the fiberglass needles breaking up as you clean but as you can see you get it nice and shiny because if it ain't shiny it ain't going to solder no way so okay blow the residue off that okay now then what I need to do now is to cut out a couple of fish plates so we've uh, tinned our fish plates and now I'm going to do is cut myself a couple off the edge and I'm using these uh, zircon etch cutters so if you can see these get me in the right place yeah okay they're a little bit pricey but they are extremely good value for cutting stuff off because they are sharp and they do cut nicely okay so what I'm going to do now is just cut with the edges and just square them off either end so I've got a nice square edge to my fish plate okay I should be doing this over here so you can see it just one minute yeah okay uh, there we go yeah I'll cut it off there and then I'm going to cut the next one off just a little tiny thing so they're quite hard to capture on the camera I'm afraid I'm sorry about that but I am doing my best to show you okay so there we go cut that other one off there nice and square and just lay it down in our piece of wood we're going to solder onto always use a piece of wood for your soldering on too because metal takes the heat away and makes soldering more difficult okay so I've got my two fish plates there okay got my two fish plates there okay ready to solder on okay I'm going to give it another little clean there another little clean there and I might give it a little clean on the back of the fish plate as well just to help matters along because it's oxidization that stops things soldering and the metal absorbs oxygen as soon as so I'll just do that while my solder iron is warming up okie dokie right so I'm going to flux it Boom, put a load in don't worry about how much there is I'm not going to get precious about that and then I'm going to hold my fish plate in or just position it make sure we're the right way around yes I have just pop him in there okay as you can see there's a lot of solder on the back side of it but that doesn't matter that does not matter and just get it so we've got the bolts adjacent to it there okay and we're going to get our soldering iron without knocking over our bottle of flux that's always a hazard okay and see if our soldering iron has got a nice bright edge to it okay where we don't need to put any solder, old solder on the iron here because we've tinned our component so I'm just going to hold that in place and bring the iron 
down onto the fish plate. That's it. You can hear the flux sizzling and the solder running. Use it to my ears. Keep your iron on, make sure. Give it plenty of heat, you can't do too much. Then as you take your iron off, keep the cocktail stick pressing down on the fish plate so you don't drag the fish plate off with it. Okay, lovely. <coughs> That's one done. And now we'll do the next one. Turn him over, he's got a little bit of heat burn on him. As you can see, well we want that nice and clean, don't we? Turn him over, clean again. As I say, you can't clean enough, really, on this job. I'll turn him over. A flux again. Okay, I'll... there's four bolts on a fish plate, and I'm going to make sure I've got two bolts either side of the cut that I put in the top of the rail. Move it into position using my cocktail stick because that won't burn my fingers, will it? I don't like burn my fingers. Okay, iron again, press it on. You can see the solder go nice and silvery, and you'll hear the flux boiling and vaporizing away. Give it plenty of heat. Keep the iron on and then keep the solder, the cocktail stick pressed on as you come off so you don't pull the fish plate off with it. Now what usually happens here with me is I've soldered the top one on but I've also unsoldered the back one while I'm doing it and that's what happens sometimes and has this happened this time? No it's not, it's stayed on. Okay, have we soldered well or have we not? Unplug the soldering iron, give it a wipe on the blade, on the little wet sponge or damp sponge what you like, get your wire brush, okay, and does it stay in position? Yes it does. Does that one stay in position? Yes it does. And so what we have there now is a nice, let's get in the camera, where are we? I'll bring it down here, simple. Yeah, okay, we've got a nice Cosmetic rail joint. Okay, that one on that side, I'm slightly off centre with it, but I'm not going to get worried about it. I'm not going to fuss on that one. I'm just like sort of half a mil to the right with it, but uh, I'm not going to get uh, uh, messed about with that. I'm quite happy with that. Okay, so I hope, so I hope you'll see that's soldering made easy. Yeah, okay, it's a simple process, it's not hard. What you need is the right wattage soldering iron, a bit of solder and a good flux. Okay, so I'm going to call it a draw there and move on to the next bit. So our next job is to move on to putting the chairs on the rail itself. Now then, when you've sawn your rail, okay, what you'll end up with is burrs on the end. And that will make it difficult to slide the chairs on. So get a small file. These are called Swiss files or needle files. You buy them in a pack for not much money. I think how much you pay depends on the quality. But I don't think you're talking about a large investment of money. And just flatten the end off so it's nice and flat. A little bit of a go with the file. You might feel better doing this in the vice. It's up to you. And then, not on the bull head on the thin flat edge of the rail just try and file a little guide a little wedge to help the chair slide on because it's a meticulous job sliding the chairs on and it can soon become a bit tedious if you're struggling to slide the chairs on so I always try and file a little start onto the end of the rail at each end just to make life a little bit easier for myself mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just 
file all the edges with a little bit of a, a wedge shape on them, a lead in, just to help the chair get on the rail. Nobody will notice when it's finished, don't worry. I'll just try and hold that up to the camera and see if you can see what I've done there. I doubt you will. Uh, let's have a no, it's a bit blurred, isn't it? Okay. But you'll see you can see what I'm doing. If you get your own eyes a bit of rail, I'll just do the other end as well. Okay. Flatten that off. And again, just on the thin, not the top, the bullhead, because the chairs slide over the thin section of the rail at the bottom. And they don't touch the bull head really. Make sure you find the right way. You'll always get the uh, side of the rail mixed up. There's no question about that. It's a common mistake. And you'll uh, always need to check that you've got the bull head upwards. Because it's easy to make the mistake of turning the rail upside down. Because you have to look quite closely to distinguish the top bullhead rail from the bottom flat rail. Okay. So let's have a see how we go on there. We'll put our rail back in the right position where it li lives on our template and what I want to show you next is we've got two types of chur ok I'll just get these in focus at the right length yeah ok two types of chur these are the four bolt slide chairs and we use quite a few of these ok about a dozen or so because were the switch bed slides up against the stock rail or the turnout rail we need it to slide across the top of the chur and these are called slide chairs these are your proper three bolt full chairs, okay, and you'll see if you look closely the little wooden wedge which the uh, track layers, uh, permanent layer gang, drive into them in real life to keep them in place. That wooden wedge always goes against the floor of traffic. So if you like, if the in uh, in, in our case in this turnout, oh, just let me position it correctly, yep, yeah. oh, there we go. There we go. Uh, uh, my trains are going to be coming down this way. Okay, because it's where the, the trains come back onto the main line. Okay, this is the main. This is one of the platform lines. And so the trains travel this way, which means the wedge on the outside of the rail will face towards. Okay, and as you can see on these, okay, on these chairs here, okay, they are left and right handed. Okay, one side of the sprue is left, the other side is right. Okay, the next job, okay, is to mark out where these are going. Okay, now, it is uh, depicted on uh, the Templot template here. It has uh, an S against the sleeper for slide chairs, and it has a, a T against them for the normal chairs for some reason. But I'm a numpty, and I like to, to mark very clearly where each chair goes, where the respective chairs go and I want to make that and mark it quite clearly so I'm going to grab my felt tip pen okay nice big red one okay and I'm going to start at the bottom here okay I'll just move that up so you can see it okay and I'm going to put that's a normal one I'm not going to put it against there I'm going to put here I'm going to put S for a slide S for a slide, S for a slide chair, S for a slide chair, S for a slide chair, S for a slide chair there, S for a slide chair there. And then we get to the joint on the switch rail, okay, where then we can put the uh, uh, proper chairs and we can that. But a little anomaly here, I'll put a full chair in there, okay, uh, just after the switch rail, and you'll see that when we come to it. And then that's a normal one, that's a normal one. And I come up here to the check rails and I'm going to miss two out. Okay, and I'm going to put a C for check 
and a C for check against that because what I want to be able to do is put a full chur on my check rail and just a half chur on my stop rail okay it just helps keep the check rail in place that little bit better now the next job we've got is cutting the chairs off the sprue okay which is a laborious job okay which we take our knife to okay and making sure that okay we have the wedge on the outside of the rail pointing forward towards which way the trains are coming i'm going to want the ones on this side of the sprue okay where i'm pointing with my knife so if you like you might say to yourself well hold on a minute rick how few you chose and and void you won't need them well i will because i'll need them for the other side on the stop rail on the turnout rail so just cut them off like that okay that's all you need to do you cut them off and then we have to thread them on and thread them on is a little bit of an art in itself okay and what i'm going to do is i'm going to just take it like that there where i've chamfered the rail a bit to help it go on i will pray and hope that it will go on and it won't of course it wouldn't and i want to try another one see if we get that on that one's gone on thank you very much okay so i can now start to slide my chairs onto my stop rail okay i don't know if you can see this too well on the camera uh, but i'll get a thin little file okay and just to if i zoom in too much i lose focus on the picture that's it and just slide them on okay and what we want on this one how many do we want well we've got uh, slide chairs Oops, just uh, show you the picture. We can count how many we want on. Let me get this in the picture. There we are. Got the whole thing in the picture. Okay, so what we're going to want is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18 chairs we need to slide on this rail. Two at this end, because we can't slide them past that rail break we made. Okay, two at this end. Uh, did I say 18 chairs? And so therefore 16 at this end. And that's what I'm going to do now. It's laborious. Okay, a bit time consuming, but that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I've uh, threaded all the uh, chairs onto the rail, okay, all 18 of them. Okay, but there's one last job we need to do now before we actually glue it to the sleepers. And that is to fit the fish plates at either end of the rail. Again, okay, I'm going to use the fish plates that we tinned earlier. Okay, I'm going to cut them off as we did earlier. This is much of a repeat, but instead of soldering to a full length of the rail or having rail on either side of the fish plate okay I'm just trying to do that in camera yeah okay uh, we are going to uh, just put half the fish plate on the rail so that it gives us a guide to put our connecting track to and it looks realistic which is a bit of what we want okay so i've trimmed them off okay i'm going to put them on there i've got my soldering iron plugged in i'm going to get my scratch brush clean it if you want it if it's not shiny it's not going to solder just clean the end of the rail up there both sides okay clean my fish plates up not shiny it's not going to solder okay and then I'm 
I put the rail on blocks to support it just to keep it level. There's a block at this end that you can see and the same block at the other end or halfway down the rail just to keep it standing up. Ok, we're going to get our flux. Ok, brush it on. Thank you very much, plenty plenty. Then we're going to get our fish plate. Ok, and just position it again, we want. Two bolts on the rail and two bolts off. And I've got a fine file here. I'll just put the top on the back of the flux because it's easy to knock it over. OK, and where's our iron? Yeah. Right, OK, so I've got a fine little fine needle file here that I'm going to use to hold the fish plate on and position it. So I get as little heat loss as possible. Little bit skew with right okay he'll do us there and then put the iron on we see the solder melt and begin to shine and we hear the flux boiling away there give it a good heat good heating well, we've got flux and we've got heat the solder will flow okay and we're done again there take it off lovely turn it over and I'm just going to clean again because we've dirted it on the back of the block. The block's just singed it a wee bit. Just going to get that. Okay. Nice and shiny. Top off the flux. Brush in. Flux on the rail once again. Don't need to put any solder on the iron, okay, because we've tinned the component to go on. And again, I'm just going to position it on as nicely as I can initially. And I'm going to get my tiny file, this needle file, hold it in position, hold it on together there, keep the weight on, press down, get my iron on. Here's the solder, but the flux boiling. See the solder going nice and bright and shiny. And we know we're there. Keep pressing on the needle file. Okay, just while it cools and the solder solidifies. Have we got a good joint? Looks like it to me. Let's test it with the wire brush. Give it a brush there. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Time to do it left-handed so you can see it in the camera. Yeah, good one. Okay, and we have to do this after we put the chairs on because otherwise we wouldn't be able to slide the chairs on. Sometimes when you were, uh, I'll just show you the camera. Where are we? I get a bit of. Oh, let's get in the focal length. Trying to draw it back so you can see it. No, I'm too close. That's not a bad shot there, is it? Okay. Sometimes they close up as you're uh, soldering them, and sometimes they might even solder together. That's easily cured. Okay, no problem there. Just get your knife, okay, and just bob it between them and tear them apart a little with a little twist. Not a problem, job done. So I've done that at one end, and now we're going to do it at the other end. Okay, I'm not going to repeat the process because it'll just make the video longer than it needs to be. I'll just. Okay, so next job, we're actually going to fit our stock rail and glue it into position. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to move the chairs into position. As you can see, we've fitted our fish plates. To the end here and to the other end okay here Ooh, let's get it on the camera there yeah and we have our cosmetic rail joint there okay and everything's ended up positioned nicely so i'll just slide those two into position and i'll be using my sort of check rail joint as my datum trying to keep that where it is i'm just going to slide them up just using this 
needle file. Get them in the middle of the sleep as best you can. It's not an exact science. Okay, and I've got to a gap now where I put that big C because I want to leave one out there for my check rail. So I'll slide these this way. Okay. Now I've actually made a mistake here because what I've done is I've put two chairs on this side of the joint when they should be on that side of the joint but it's not the end of the world by any stretch of the imagination and I'm just going to correct that right now. All I'm going to do is get my knife, get it inside the rail and just chop it. Oh, that one and come on cut it just stretch it off that's lovely okay so I'll just check off and I'm not going to throw them away I'm going to use them later and I'll show you how I do that okay get me rail joint back in the right position okay positioned. Now I've got a nice straight piece of rail here that I'm fitting on the straight. I've not kinked or bent it when I've been working with it. So you don't you can use a rule or something like that while you're setting it in but putting a straight rule down a straight piece of rail down a straight line okay is as long as you're sort of over the top of it and viewing it nicely shouldn't be a problem so there we go so I'm going to start at this far end and glue these two down okay and the product I'm using is called here we go plastic weld okay butone uh, I think you call it mech okay it's uh, it's all the same stuff and I believe you can all this stole this glue glues uh, plastic uh, chairs to plastic sleeper and also uh, glues plastic chairs to wooden sleepers okay but you might just have to go on the forum there and check that for actual fact also it is highly inflammable so no naked lights anywhere near it and also the fumes from it can make you a little bit happier than uh, you should be so if I start singing while I'm uh, gluing it on uh, you can start getting worried okay so uh, got my brush here for my mech pack or whatever you call it plastic weld and uh, it's not the same brush that I used for the solder flux they are separate tools and I keep them separate so all I'm going to do I'm going to start the job I've got these two check my position there yeah I'm all right with that just bring that one a little bit back okay making sure my rail is nicely over the top dip in and give them a good drenching with it both sides a good drenching perhaps a bit of light pressure count to 20 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 and it's glued okay and then I'm going to just come to this end, just perhaps the middle round here, just to sort of bring a bit of right, get my head right over the top of it and glue another two. Give them a good drenching in the glue. Okay, one, two, bit of light pressure, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen, twenty. And I'm just going to check I'm nice and straight by getting my eye at the end of it and having a loop down and make sure I've got it nice and straight and indeed I have. I'm quite happy with that and I'm going to glue now 
these end two. Okay, they're just wandering off ever so slightly. And I'll do the same again with these end two. Give them a good drenching. Light pressure only. Get your head over the top of it so you can look in right over the rail into the template. Okay, and count off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Okay, so uh, that's got to start. I'm going to get my eye on it again and have a look down. Yeah, that's as straight as an arrow. I'm very happy with that, and I can now just glue the rest of it. I mean, having glued it there, the and there and with these two fellas here that I've knifed in half because I didn't put them in the right place that's easily cured when you can cut there it is I'm just going to put them on cut them in half and bob them on okay because I think I like building a turnout when you think about when you put it on paper and you're using sellotape you think oh that's all a bit weak isn't it but the fact of the matter is, when you add all these elements together, the paper, the gluing down of the sleepers and the chairs, everything gets rather strong because you've got all these very small elements coming together. I'm just going to hold that in place. I don't want to deflect it at all from there. Give it a good drenching. And the next one. Thank you very much. Lovely. and then get the other side, the inside of the bit ok, I'm just going to bob them in place and glue them not the end of the world and you're using all these chairs and I think so probably 50% of them are, are merely cosmetic to be quite honest with you well, he's not, uh, I stretched him a bit there, I've got the wrong place just swap them over Just move the glue bottle, put the top back on it, so you can see what I'm doing. I've got half a chance to see what I'm doing. I'm putting the back half, or the inside half of the chair, when I can get hold of it. I'm just mating it together. That's it, that one goes there now. Where I chopped them into purrs. That one over there. Okay, so I'm just going to. Come on, a bit fiddly this bit, I suppose. Okay, top off the glue again. <laughs> Put it on the wrong sleeper, have I? Never mind. Glue it in place, give it a good drenching. Put this one back where it should be, maybe. doesn't want to go in so I'm just going to cut its legs off a bit so it'll nestle up to the rail when I say that, you know 50% of these chairs are, are cosmetic uh, because if you only use half of them you still have quite a strong construction because the rail's so strong ok so I've got that in now and I am going to sight down, yeah, nice and straight, very happy with that, very happy with that indeed, okay, and I'll just finish off gluing the rest in place. So we've got all the uh, chairs into place now, and the next thing we need to do is fit the slide chairs. A little bit of test of strength, got it, yeah, no problem, nice and strong. Okay, now, I think we have a little scale issue with the slide chairs. I can just sort of show you one in the camera. You'll see these two uh, inside bolts here, the two inner ones, they stick up as they should do. And I think the gauge issue is the fact that these are built to scale. Whoops, that's just gone for a, a, a walk. I'm not looking for that. These are built to scale, but uh, 
the switch blades on the point open greater than scale and therefore right over the top of these bolts which makes the action of the switch blades uh, it can jam them up and make them flicky and messy so what I do is just like I'm doing here these bolts on the inside the bolt heads I'm just going to crop them off with my knife just crop them off because these are what jam up the point blades ok and then I'm going to yeah, and then I'm going to just fit in my slide shirt. So I can, they only go in from one side, they only take a pinch on one side. I'll just fit a couple because, like I say, it's quite repetitive. Not to hurt them. Bit of downward pressure. And don't push them in, just make them kiss the rail. Don't push them in. Okay. You don't want it to be deflecting the rail inwards. We want to keep it nice and arrow straight. I'll just get my little file there. That's it. Just press that down a touch. Make sure you're just kissing it. That's it. And we're gluing that one again. Don't don't be trying to give them a good soaking. And if you ever want to remove a chair uh, with a plastic weld, just soak it again with plastic weld, and it'll come loose. Because the plastic weld dissolves the plastic weld. Okay, so I'll just then glue this one in. Let's make sure it's tucked in nicely. Yes, it is now. It wasn't before. It's going to centre a bit. Don't worry. Glue's not dry yet. That'll do, mate. Just pressing down a bit, not deflecting. Careful not to deflect the rail either way. Keep it nice and straight. Okay, so that's those two in. And I'll just finish off now and I'll put the other ones in. So just to finish off, we've got our stock rail in, uh, our slide chairs here in these positions, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then our normal chairs here, all the way up here, left two spaces, because I want to put a full chair in for our check rails. So I just left two spaces there. And I don't know if I'd, I've sort of covered it quite quickly. I put two chairs too many here and two chairs uh, not enough on this side because you can't slide them past the cosmetic joint that we made. So all I did to fix that was I sliced the chairs off the rail with my knife, just put it down the inside of the chair, sliced them in two and then reconstituted them either side of the rail here on the other side and glued them back together. Job done, no problem. Okay, so that's the stock rail fitted and then we'll move on from there and uh, we'll take our next step.